In this video, we are going to be sowing the seeds of the world's stickiest plant. This is Rorigula gogonius, and I probably pronounced that name very, very wrong. And now in order for us to actually sow these seeds, there's a couple things we need to do. Firstly, we need to get some soil ready. We need to actually light a fire. I'll talk more about that later. Now, the reason why I say this is probably the world's stickiest plant is because unlike our normal sun juice, which are sticky, these guys are also sticky, but the type of sticky is different. The stickiness of these guys is actually resin. And if you guys have ever come into contact with resin, just, just good luck. Let us actually get started in growing these plants. And first up, we need to get some soil. If you've never heard of Origula before, these plants are native to South Africa and they love a lot of free draining soil. So what I have here is some old sundew soil. It's two parts of sand to one part of peat and I've just added in more perlite. I put them in our normal pots with a little sphagnum moss base so that no soil falls out and then just filled it up like normal. So I was getting ready for the next part of this video and I have lost the vial. Like I'm not even joking. I picked it up because the dog Reggie was running around and he was next to it. So I was like, oh, let me, let me hold it so that he doesn't knock it onto the floor or something. But I don't know where I put it now. So we still haven't found it. Karen's looking. My mom's also looking. We were like, it was literally, I was standing there with the tape measure. I walked inside, spoke to my mom for a bit and then I realized it was gone. And I know I was holding it there. So it's been like. Okay, let's um, lift this up. It's gonna be around here. It's lit it was like a five minute window. It was literally like a five minute window. And I don't know, like all I was there between there and the kitchen and I can't find it. I don't know what I've done with it. We just found it because we, we were like, let's look through the rubbish in case. Mm -hmm. There it is in the rubbish bin. Wow. I cannot believe how stressed I am. Let's pick it up. And I'm so... Oh, it's in a tissue. That's what happened. I remember my hands were wet. I need to put this down because I don't want this to get wet. I'll put it on a tissue so it gets dry. My mom must have grabbed it and thrown it away. Yeah. I'm so glad I got that back. So am I. Now we can sleep tonight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, that, was, that, was, it, that was so stressful, straight up. That was so stressful. But anyway, on to the next part. Oh. So one of our subscribers, Mr. Striker, once again, I'd been, been talking to Mr. Striker Carnivorous Carnival on Instagram, and I've read a couple books and articles about growing these plants and sowing them. But Mr. Striker gave me an amazing suggestion of using powdered sphagnum. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna blend this up and try turn this dried sphagnum moss into blended powdered sphagnum moss. So that you can lay it on the surface of your pot, which means that your seeds get really good water contact. And if you didn't know this, sphagnum actually inhibits the growth of fungus, algae and mold. And um, I had known this for maybe three or four years, but I'd never thought about actually using powdered sphagnum moss for seedlings, just like Mr. Striker suggested. Thank you once again, Mr. Striker. I'm gonna blend this up and we're gonna pour it onto the surface of our pot and then we're gonna lay our seeds and then we can light a fire. And I'll tell you more about that, don't worry. The stuff is so soft. It's amazing, guys. You should try it out, definitely. Wow. Let's try to get the powdery stuff, the most powdery stuff down. Look at that. Okay. And before that flies off, I'm gonna try spray it with a bit of water. Now I'm tapping this down pretty well because I really want to make sure that the soil makes good contact with the moss so that the moss obviously doesn't dry out. That looks really, really good and I'll keep you guys updated and if you want to follow along, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now it's time for us to actually sow the seeds and I will not lose them this time. Now I've got the vial, I haven't lost them. And what people sometimes do is that 
Once they start actually germinating, then they'll separate them out into their own pots. Depending on how many we actually get to germinate, I will do the same. But, you know, I don't really think I will be doing that. I don't think that many will germinate, maybe two or three. But let's try and get these guys on. So there we have them, all seven of them, and I'm gonna give them a quick little spray down just to make sure that they have decent water. This brings us up onto the next step. We have to light a fire around them. <laughs> This wasn't as cool as what I'm trying to make it look like. I couldn't even light the grass, so I had to go and get a bit of cardboard to try and light it. But I needed the smoke out of these guys. The reason is because in South Africa, where these plants are native to, there are always wildfires that goes through the natural vegetation. These wildfires burn off all the vegetation and that releases a lot of smoke and ash, clears the ground around the seeds, and a combination of these different things allows the seeds to know hey, there's been a fire, I could grow now because there's no vegetation around. You know, that's a very simple way of putting it. So hopefully we can get our plants to grow. And these are our seeds just after we finished the smoke treatment. They actually smelled like barbecued sausages, which made me a bit hungry. So it has now been an entire week with our seeds in the new spot. And of course there hasn't been any new germination, but there has been a little bit of green color spreading across the pot, which is nothing to really worry about. Now I still haven't mentioned the coolest parts about these plants and that is how they actually get the food from the bugs that they catch. These plants catch a lot of bugs as I mentioned because of their really resinous sticky glands but the other thing that actually makes them so unique is that aside from catching bugs they have bugs that live on them which eat the bugs that get caught and then they poop that food that they eat out onto the plant and that is how Rurigula gets their food. And these bugs are called assassin bugs. So it's a very scary name for these bugs, as you can imagine. Imagine an assassin bug coming after you if you were stuck in this plant. It's coming to suck the blood out of you and then poop that blood out onto the plant and give your nutrition to the plant. That's exactly what these bugs do for these plants. Now, I hope you guys learned something new from this video. If you did, please remember to leave a like. But we want our plants to grow well. And we got sent something called fish. And this will hopefully be something that we can use to make our plants grow really really well so in the next video i'm actually going to be pouring this onto some different plants so that we can see if they react badly or positively towards them and hopefully we can see a little bit of you know a speed growth boost or something in the plant and of course we might end up giving these to the rigid too so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe to the channel but until then i'm going to go feed the plants this literally right now and start recording that video for you guys so i'll see you guys in that one